Thanks for watching. So, in a previous video, I calculated the integral of 1 over x to the n dx plus 1, sorry. Uh, thanks for watching. So, in a previous video, I calculated the integral of 1 over x to the n plus 1 from 0 to infinity, where I used a lot of complex analysis and residues. But today, I will show you a completely non-complex analysis way of doing this. And by the way, it's not my idea. Thank you, Andy Gregory, for figuring this out. You're awesome. And so, what's the clever way? Well, let's just use a substitution. We have no idea what substitution to use, so let's just do the whole thing, all right? So let t, I guess u if you like, or t, be the whole thing, 1 over x to the n minus 1, then t of 0, well, it's 1 over 0 to the n plus 1, which is 1, and t of infinity, that's 1 over infinity plus 1, which is 0. And then dt, use the Chen Lu, so that's minus 1 over that junk square times n, so derivative of that, n x to the n minus 1 dx. So the dx is the opposite, dx is minus x to the n plus 1 squared over n x to the n minus 1 dt. Which tells us that this integral, let's call it i, becomes the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 to 0, of this is t, and then dx is minus x to the n plus 1 squared over n x to the n minus 1. Of course, for the substitution integrals, never mix x and t. And that's why let's write this in terms of t only. So first of all, t is 1 over x to the n minus 1. So x to the n plus 1, sorry, is 1 over t. So if you square that, you get it's 1 over t squared, So which takes care of this, this thing. So it becomes integral, I guess. Also, this minus, it makes the integral switch signs. So integral from 0 to 1 of um, t times this becomes 1 over t squared. But of course, we still have this issue of what 1 over x to the n minus 1. But it's OK. Let's simplify this a little bit. So that becomes the n here. Let's forget about it. It's not very useful. 1 over n integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t over. All right. Now, let's write this thing 1 over x to the n minus 1 as, um, I guess, x over x to the n. Et. Because again, it indeed becomes 1 over x to the n minus 1. And now let's see. So t is 1 over x to the n plus 1. So x to the n plus 1 is 1 over t. And therefore, x to the n is 1 over t minus 1. Which takes care of the first part. But indeed, even better, we find that if you take nth roots, and remember, you know, t is between 0 and 1, so it, and x is between 0 and infinity, so x becomes the nth root of that. And even better, let's just put it on a common denominator, so we have 1 minus t over t to the 1 minus n, and that's the same thing as 1 minus t to the 1 over n times t to the minus 1 over n. 
And now that's nice. We have everything in an integral. And you know, I mean, we have everything in terms of t. And again, let's do the same spiel here. 1 over t over t. And now we can transform the integral into the following one. i, i, I captain, okay, is 1 over f integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over t. Now, x becomes this thing, 1 minus t to the 1 over n, and then t to the minus 1 over n, and the bottom becomes 1 minus t over t. But the cool thing is the t's here cancel out. And you, you're left with the following. So, dt, you're left with 1 over n, integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t, 1 over n, minus 1, and t of minus 1 over n. But here's a little trick, and it, it becomes very clear in a second why. Here it's nice, we have something minus 1. We also want there to be here something minus 1, but no problem, just add and subtract 1. So 1 minus 1 over n minus 1 dt. And here is a nice thing, and here's why I did that, because it turns out you can write this integral in terms of a much more known function, which is called the beta function. So beta xy, it's defined to be the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 minus t x minus 1 and t y minus 1 dt. I know there are 10,000 formulations of this, but this is an equivalent formulation and that's precisely what we have here, but with 1 over n's. So beta of 1 over n and 1 minus 1 over n. And in fact, we're almost done, surprisingly, because <laughs> there are lots of facts that I'll skip, but which I've actually done in previous videos. So our integral can be conveniently written in terms of the beta function. And here's the next fact. There's a relationship between the beta function and the gamma function. So beta xy is gamma x times gamma y over gamma of x plus y. And in fact, I believe I've shown this in a video about the integral of sine of x squared. And therefore, what's nice is we can just plug in this formula. So our integral is i is 1 over n times beta of 1 over n times 1 minus 1 over n. So this is gamma of 1 over n times gamma of 1 minus 1 over n over gamma of the sum which becomes 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n, which is gamma of 1. But the nice thing is this is easy to calculate because gamma at the integers, so it's just a factorial function. So this is 0 factorial, which is 1. And it turns out the numerator is also easily to calculate. And in fact, I've either done this or will do in the next video or in a future video. In general, gamma of z times gamma of 1 minus z is pi over sine of pi z. So, in fact, this is exactly what we have here, but with 1 over n. So, i is 1 over n times pi over sine of pi over n which is pi over n over sine of pi over n. 
Whoa, how cool is that? We have shown that our integral is pi over n over sine of pi over n. And without using a single complex number, but it's a bit cheating though, because I think this fact, the way I prove it, uses complex numbers. But still, no, no eyes were harmed in this video. All right, so if you like that, first of all, thank Andy Gregory, and also, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.